just a couple minutes here, so I want you to go grab your coffee, gather yourselves around, and get ready to dive into today's message. Just wanted to remind you that we do have online hosts here who are ready to answer any questions or pray alongside you. So we'll see you back here in a couple minutes. Well, good morning, Hope Church. Thanks for joining us on this Memorial Day weekend. My name is Tom, and uh, we're going to do a song this morning. It's called Stand in Your Love. If you know it, sing along with us.
Hey everybody, this is Steve. And Grace. We just wanted to say hi and hope everybody is good. I miss you all. Bye. Bye. Hi, hi, hi Hope, Hope Church. Church. We miss you. We miss you guys. Hey Hope Church family. I am missing all of you guys so very much. And I can't wait till we are reunited because it's going to feel so good. <laughs> Enjoy your Sunday. Hey everyone, I just wanted to welcome you here today at CT Hope Online. I'm so glad that you've joined us. My name is Michelle Dayton and I am the Children's Ministry Director here and I'm serving as one of your online hosts today. If you are here for the first time today, I want to send an extra big shout out to you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad you're here. We are going to have a great service. I want to encourage you guys to get the best out of this experience. You want to engage with us. Check in in the chat. Let us know you're here. If you have any questions or if you need prayer, our online hosts are here for you. You could just click on the prayer button. Someone will be with you in a private room where you can say what's on your heart and they can pray alongside with you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask those in the chat as well. If you have kids in your house, hello kids, I miss you. Um, we have programming pre-K through fifth grade every single Sunday. It's great, it's developmentally appropriate, engaging, and fun. Go ahead and follow the link that's on this page or go to cthope.com and follow the links for Kids Ministry Online. Um, today, this weekend is Memorial Day weekend. We wanna say happy, happy Memorial Day weekend to you. We wanna know what you're doing. So go ahead and snap a picture of what this weekend looks like for you. We miss your faces. We want to see you. Share those on social media with us. Facebook or Instagram, tag us at CT Hope Church. So we are going to go into one more worship song, but before we do, I wanted to open us with a verse from Psalm today. So we've got Psalms 66, verses one through four. Shout joyful praises to God, all the earth. Sing about the glory of his name. Tell the world how glorious he is. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Your enemies cringe before your mighty power. Everything on earth will worship you. They will sing your praises, shouting your name in glorious songs. <laughs> Go. 
morning Hope Church. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Happy Memorial Day weekend. We hope that it is a great one for you. I hope it's uh, safe. I hope that you uh, can get outdoors and enjoy the amazing weather we've had over the last week and just uh, take some time to reflect on the freedoms we have because some paid the ultimate price so you and I could be free even to have church online. Um, What an awesome country that we live in. I know we have many divisions on many different topics. Let's for a day 
Think about the fact that we have that freedom to disagree. Uh, let's uh, be thankful today. Uh, let me set you up for this morning. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, I, throughout the course of us looking at God's Word today, am going to have a couple questions for you to reflect upon. So what's going to happen is I'm going to queue up a question. I'm going to say, hey, here's the reflection question. Uh, and I'm going to put up a counter on the screen. Uh, and I'm just going to have you spend some time thinking about those questions. Let me challenge you, if you have family, uh, a spouse or whatever, maybe this is something you ask each other out loud. I know that may be a little awkward, but I want this to be more interactive this morning, and I want you to really dive in uh, to what truth we're learning today. Uh, well, uh, we've had a little bit of time on our hands the last few weeks. I don't know if you have, <clears throat> but uh, I've been doing a little bit of housekeeping, and I don't just mean cleaning up our house. Yes, we're getting ready to open our pool and all that stuff. Uh, I went onto my computer and I decided, you know what? It's time to start organizing all of my photos. I, I don't know how many of you take a lot of pictures. I'm average, I don't take a ton, but obviously since we've had kids, we have a lot of pictures and videos and they're on the cloud, they're on a computer, they're on my phone, they're all here, there, and everywhere. So I decided to start getting all of these together. It's been, yeah, it's been a blessing, let me tell you. Uh, it's been a lot of work and it's going to be a lot of work for a long time getting these organized. As I was looking through them, lo and behold, I came across some pictures from nine years ago. Nine years ago, I had made it my goal. I was going to lose a significant amount of weight, and I know I've shared it. I don't have to belabor this, but uh, I got down to 167 pounds, uh, and uh, I came across some of those pictures, and I'm looking at myself. I'm like, oh my word, I was skinny. Holy cow, that's unbelievable. Uh, now, before and after pictures for us, or when we look at old pictures of us, um, we have quite a series of different reflections and reactions. Even as I had one of them, I'm like, good grief, I can't believe this, uh, how skinny I had gotten. And that leads to our reactions. Um, uh, some of us get motivated by that. Uh, maybe, you know, as I look at that picture, I'm not going to lie, there's part of me, it's like, I need to get on the treadmill and get to 166. That's going to be a lot of work, let me tell you, because I enjoy food. But uh, you get motivated when you see old pictures from high school or college or when you just began your career and you're like, yeah, that's awesome. I've changed. I'm going to get back to that. That's one reaction we have. But one of the other reactions we have is depression. <laughs> we look back and we're like, man, I was doing really good. I was... I was happy, I was in shape, I, you know, life was awesome back then. And there's a little bit of bittersweetness with it because instead of being motivated, we're like, I'll never get back to that. I wish I could, but I can't. And the reason this is such an interesting observation for me this past week is because we are in a time of change. Uh, we are in a time of change. Over the last 12 weeks, some of us have changed our lives. Some of us have made decisions. We've had time for reflection, and we are at a point of change. And change is a great thing, but change is a hard thing because it's choosing to transform your life. Now, in life, we have all kinds of different change. There's natural change. It's the reason that your 13 or 14-year-old son has a voice that's going like this. You know who you are. You're changing. It's natural. You can't do anything about it. Uh, you know, us old guys are still changing. Some of you guys have, you know, hair growing out of your ears. All right, I love you. You do. I, and, and I'm still going to eventually, once it's safe, shake hands with you again and hug you. But um, change happens naturally. Some change is a commitment that we make. We make a decision that we want to make a difference in our life. And some of us over this quarantine period have done that. But some change in our lives we don't ask for, and yet it's on us. And we have to decide what we're going to do with it. Some of us have gone through the loss of a spouse, a child. Our marriage falls apart. Uh, we don't get to have a graduation ceremony. Uh, you think of all these different ways that people's lives have changed, even over these last 12 weeks, and guess what? We didn't ask for this. I didn't ask for this. You didn't ask for this. I don't know one person that was like, man, I really wish that we could just have, I don't know, three months of quarantine so that I could just lose out on some key parts of my life. 
We don't. And that's why this is hard. This is change. And just like the other natural changes or decisions that we make, we have to decide what we are going to do with this change, what we are going to do with this time. There's a lot of words being used right now to describe the time we're in. And one of those I'm actually starting to get a little bit sick of hearing it, and I've named the sermon after it, is the new normal. The new normal. What is the new normal going to look like? Now, I believe that there are some things from the old normal that are going to come back to the new normal. I believe that it's not going to be totally a different world, but some things are going to be different. Some of us don't know what school is going to look like in the fall. Are we still going to have to figure out how to homeschool our kids? Or, uh, you know, are they going to be able to go to school and they have to be six feet apart and all of that? Uh, we don't know what our jobs are going to look like. Some of you work for a company that has been impressed at the level of productivity you have had working from home. And they may say, why are we paying hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars for this building when we can have people work at home and be just as productive, if not more productive. Let's save some money. And they're gonna sell buildings and have you work from home. Some of us don't know what going to our favorite restaurant is going to be like after this. Uh, I saw, a, you know, somebody put up a picture of a mask for uh, the time period we're in. It was a, a mask and it had a hole for a straw. It's like, that's genius. Uh, you know, so you go to a restaurant and now it's safe. Um, uh, all of us don't know what's coming. We are in a new normal. Some things are going to be different, and they may be different permanently, but some things will be the same. The reality is we all have change that we are going through, and we need to decide how we are going to respond to this change. I ask you this, what have you learned between the old normal and the new normal that we are getting ready to enter? In this period of time, what observations, what lessons, what things have you been confronted with or had to deal with? That's going to be different in the new normal. We're going to look at God's word today. And, and uh, let me start uh, by saying this. Uh, for some of you, this has been a very difficult time. It's been a trial of sorts. It's been a period of unhappiness. And it's very real. And today I'm going to look at 1 Peter chapter 1 because uh, the book of 1 Peter, written by Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, his most outspoken, the strongest leader of all the disciples, Peter writes this to a church that was under duress. They were under persecution. They were suffering for being Christians. The government was beginning to clamp down on them. The religious leaders were already clamping down on them. And now Peter writes to them some words of encouragement. We're going to take a look at 1 Peter 1, verses 5 and 6. They say this, in all this you greatly rejoice. In all this you greatly rejoice. In the suffering that's coming on? No, what Peter says in the verses previous to this is he's saying, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have been born into a living hope. If you're a follower of Jesus, you have hope. It's there. And so he says, in all of this you greatly rejoice, that you have hope. But then he goes on, he says, though now... For a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Peter says this, he's like, uh, for a little while here. Now, for some of you, the last 12 weeks has not been a little while. It has felt like a year. Uh, it's been a miserable time. And yet Peter here, even in this time of persecution with the church says, okay, you know what? It's been a little while. <laughs> well, it's probably more than a little while. It just, it definitely felt longer. Though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief. This word he uses here for grief is emotional distress possible physical suffering. Uh, it's, it's an annoyance. It's hurt. You know how that feels. And he says, you know what? You've had to suffer grief of all kinds of trials. The word he uses here for trials can also be uh, translated from the Greek as test, an examination. He says that this grief that you are going through is actually an exam. An exam? An exam for what? 
He goes on and he says, the trials and the grief have come so that uh, it, it can be proven the genuineness of your faith. The authenticity of your faith, that's what these are going towards. These are revealing how authentic your faith really is. And so he says, all these trials and tests are going to prove the genuineness of your faith because they're of greater worth than gold. The genuineness of your faith has more value than anything in this world. Diamonds and gold and silver are great, but the genuineness of your faith is something bigger. And then he talks about this process here of refining. He says, which perishes, though refined by fire, may result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. That through these times of trial, praise, glory, and honor are revealed in us. Now, I don't have to go through metallurgy 101 with you because I don't know a whole lot about it. But I do know what refining is, or at least what it was in biblical times. You see, to get pure gold or pure silver, they would put gold and silver in a crucible, in a, a vessel that would not melt. They would heat it to enormous levels of heat. And they would put the metal in there and the metal would melt. And, and the impurities would float to the top where they could be scooped away. And then the gold, the molten gold or molten silver would be pulled out and cooled. And what was left was pure. It was free of impurity. And so Peter says here, you know what? This difficult time you've been going through of trial and grief, this testing, is to prove the, uh, the genuineness of your faith. It's getting rid of impurity in your life, and what you're left with is praise and glory and honor to Jesus. Now, quarantine's been a crucible for us. The refining process has shown who we really are. And this time, some of us have had to confront some brutal truths about ourselves, about our relationships with other people, about how well we handle difficulty. And we've talked a lot about that over the last few weeks. I don't need to go through that again. But this has been a refining period for you. And so now, we're getting back to a new normal. And my question is, has anything been scooped away? What impurity has made itself known that you have or you know you should do something about, that you need to clear out? Has it been your passions? Has it been your focus has been off? You've been more consumed with work than your own health, than your own family's health. Is it that your priorities have been wrong? Once everything gets taken away, all of a sudden you realize what your priorities and what was most important to you. Uh, has it been your attitudes that you need to change? Has it been what your faith depends on? Is it depending on you or is it depending on Jesus? Or maybe it's just your character in general has been revealed to you. Whatever it is, this time, this test, this examination, this waiting we've been through has revealed a great deal about us. And we have that opportunity to change or go back or try to go back to the old normal. Some of you made changes in this time that have been life-altering, and, and it's encouraging for me to hear. I've heard some that are actually considering a change in career because during this time, God was able to speak to them, and they were open to what God had for them, and so they decided, I'm leaving the career that I've been in to go a different direction. Some of you have stepped up into ministry. Some of you have tried to make a marriage right that had gone off the rails, and man, that's great. That's great. That's the refining process that we've been through as we enter into the new normal but we must do change. I hope that none of us at Hope Church are the same as we were before. So my first question for you to spend some time reflecting on for about a minute and a half is this. What are some things that you have learned or changed about yourself during this period of time? What are some things that you've learned, you've changed, or maybe you want to change during this period of time? Take a minute and a half, Think about it, reflect it, write it down. Uh, if you have that notebook I told you about, or if you are a family, ask your kids. Maybe something that's come up uh, in your family or maybe through their schooling and all that. Whatever it is, take some time, ask, reflect. And if you don't get enough time now, when we get done our sermon, spend some more time doing it then. So here we go. Three, two, one, discuss.
right, let's get back into it. Uh, in the book of First Peter, uh, it, as we've been looking at, Peter talks about this time of trying or refining in our life that uh, many of us have been through. This has been a refining period for us. Uh, Peter reiterates the purpose of this time, this trial, this waiting period, all the way in chapter 5, verse 10. And Peter says this, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, there it is again, a little while, come on, Peter, come on, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Peter once again reiterates this time of trial for a little while. It may seem like an eternity, but it's really only been a little while. And this is going to, your refining process, it's going to show what is really genuine of your faith, what, what your faith really means to you. And it says that after you have suffered, after you have had grief, after you've had trial, there's something beautiful here, that God himself will restore you. He doesn't just leave you be and let you recover and lick your own wounds. Sometimes, yes, he does use other people or family members or a church or whatever to help us with our wounds. But it says that God himself does this ministry of restoration in our life. What a beautiful picture that is of how much God loves us that he himself would say, I'm going to restore this person now. They've had it rough. And now I'm getting involved. In this restoration process, it says there's three things that come out of it. When God begins to restore you after the time of suffering, it makes us strong, firm, and steadfast. Strong, firm, and steadfast. Uh, the metal that has been refined, oftentimes when it comes out of the refining process, is even tougher than what it was before. It was stronger than what it was before. It was solid compared to what it was before. We come through these trying times stronger. We come through these trying times better capable to face them again in the future. It says here that God restores you and makes you even stronger than you were before. He makes you uh, uh, um, firm in your standing. What you put your life upon, what you build it on, is firm and it's steadfast. It doesn't back down. You see, I thought of it this past week and even as we're reflecting on Memorial Day weekend about military members, there's a reason why when you join the armed forces that you go to boot camp. Some of you have been through it. Some of you may be trying to forget it. <laughs> uh, you go to boot camp for a reason and, and they put you through things in boot camp for a reason. They put you through days of no sleep and doing grueling exercises with no sleep, uh, you have to learn how to push through. And the reason for that is to refine you, to make you stronger. Because if you're going to be a Marine, if you're going to be Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, whatever it is, you got to be strong. And so it's the proving grounds of just how strong you can be. But they have to remove the weakness or the mindset of weakness from your life. And so this has been a time of your strengthening. And why? So God can strengthen you. So he can give you a grounding. Your faith is grounded on him and not something else, not a feeling, not, not what somebody else believes. Uh, we, we don't base our faith on what other people are going through or their faith experiences. We have our own to go on. And so my second question for you to reflect for a minute and a half is this. How does this perspective on trials change how you view this period of time? How does this perspective that this is a refining process, that this is to make you stronger, uh, to get rid of uh, impurity in your life, to make change? How does that change your perspective on the period of 12 weeks that we've been through?
So uh, as we get into this time, time period of new normal, and uh, you know, even as people living in Connecticut, we're seeing some restrictions being lifted and we're able to do a little bit more. And if things keep going well, you know, July 20 or June 20, excuse me, more are gonna be lifted. And um, uh, so we know things are slowly getting back to what was normal for us. Now, as we have more of these restrictions lifted, it's been interesting to hear people's responses about what they wanna do on the other side when we get back to normal, if you will. There's some that are like, man, I'm just gonna pick up right where I left off. I'm gonna go back to exactly everything I was doing before. And they're just ready to pick up everything and not leave anything behind. There's others that are like, I lost a lot of time, I lost a lot of work, I lost a lot of time with my friends, I, lost a, I missed out on movies and eating at my favorite restaurant. I'm gonna do it 10 times what I did before. Uh, you, you go overboard, it's to make up for lost time. And then there's others that are still just terrified. How do I go through this? Is it safe for me? Will I get sick if I go out? How am I supposed to do uh, work and school my children? All these different things go through the minds of people. It's been interesting to watch the reactions for many people. And I'm not going to say one is right over the other. I would say this. If this has been a time of change, if this has been a time of refining, maybe we need to be a little less the same as we were before. Maybe there are some things that we should not pick back up as we enter into the new normal. If we have had a life-changing circumstance, if we've made some life-changing decisions for Jesus during this period, then we better hold fast to them. We better hold fast to the truth of what God is and who God is in this. See, when you go through times of change, the best thing to do is hold on to that that never changes and hold loosely to that which changes all the time. We have things that never change, the character of God. We have things that, uh, um, such as our dependency upon God, uh, our need for Him in our everyday life. These things are unchanging. Nothing has changed about those truths. But there's other things that we need to be adaptable and flexible to go through while holding on to the unchanging truths of Jesus. So as we enter into the new normal, we need to think about how God has impacted our life in this. And are we just going to pick up where we left off and go back to old habits and old priorities and so on? Or are we different on the other side of this? Do we look different? Is the pre-quarantine you different than the post-quarantine you? I want to close with one example from Scripture. Peter, we, we just looked at some of um, his writing in 1 Peter, and Peter knew change. See, Peter was with Jesus for about three years. Jesus was crucified. Peter saw that. Peter was at his trial. Peter also knew that Jesus resurrected and ascended into heaven. And we know from Scripture that just a little period of time after, between 30, 60, 30 to 60 days uh, after the resurrection of Jesus, uh, Peter was in a quarantine with the other disciples, if you will. They were in an uh, upper room for a period of time. They were waiting for something that Jesus had promised, the Holy Spirit, to come upon them. And when the Holy Spirit came upon them, everything was new. It was a new normal. Things were different. Peter was different. He used to be a blabbermouth. Now he was Peter the preacher. And so Peter begins to declare God's truth to everyone. In fact, he's so good at it that the religious leaders pull him and John, uh, his fellow disciple, someone he'd known since he was growing up, someone he was a fisherman with. He brings them, or they bring uh, Peter and John before the religious leaders. And Peter there, who has said some really dumb things in the past, declares the truth that Jesus was the Messiah and has the audacity to look at the religious leaders and say, and you just killed the Messiah that you say you are waiting for. <sighs> wow. Bold. He was in a new normal. Things changed once Jesus had gone back to heaven, and Peter was changed by it. He looked totally different than months before. He looked so different that even the religious leaders saw this. And in Acts 4.13, it says this, that when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. They were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. So I ask you, 
if God has done anything in your life over the last 12 to 14 weeks, is post-quarantine you showing any signs that you had been with Jesus? Or are you the same? Are you going to go right back to who you were before? What are you not going to pick up? And so our last question is this. What discovery will I be most challenged to pick up or give up? What discovery about myself will I be challenged to pick back up and just keep doing it again and like nothing has changed? Or what is the one that I need to give up? Take 30 seconds and think about that. close with a word of prayer. Father, this is going to be weird, and I know for some this may still be hard to hear these words, but we thank you for this period of time that you have taken us all through. All of us have been on common ground. Some of us maybe have been able to work and some have not, but all of us have been in this period of trial and period of difficulty where we've been been confronted with truths in our life. And Father, as we go into the new normal, we know that your truth is unchanging and you are unchanging. And so God, we enter into it. And Lord, any of the work that you have done in our lives, things that you have pointed out that we need to do something about, or things we made decisions to change, God, that you would give us the resolve and the strength as we have been tested through this fire. May we come through And may people look at us and say, wow, they're different and they've been with Jesus. May we all adapt to the new normal. And Lord, may we not go back to the old normal of who we were. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, as we wrap up today, I just wanted to again thank you for joining us at CT Hope Online. If Hope Church is your church and you would like to give today, there's a few ways you can do that. One, simply text your gift to 84321. Two, you could click on the give options on this page or you could visit cthope.com. We want to also remind you that we have option opportunities for you to pray on Monday nights. So check out social media for the information about that. I stopped in a couple weeks ago and I did not regret it. It was truly a great experience. This team of people are caring. They truly want to pray alongside you. So I encourage you to check it out. Also, um, this is a great holiday weekend. Don't forget to send us your pictures about what you're doing this week. CT Hope Church. Have a great weekend, guys. Oh, 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 oh,